1972, Immaculata College. A Catholic institution of only 400 women, just outside of Philadelphia. And the unlikely birthplace of today's women's basketball. The best of the best. That's what we were. It's like watching Tennessee and Connecticut today. The difference was people were seeing something like that for the first time. It was the only time a team like Immaculata could have won the national tournament. What do we want? What do we want? At a time when women across America were breaking down barriers, it seemed improbable that athletic change would come from Immaculata College. The gym had recently burned down. There were no scholarships, no budget, and the uniforms belonged to an older time tunics with box pleats. All the girls wore their own white blouse underneath and bloomers, and that was our uniform. In 1972, Immaculata won 24 of 25 games to qualify for the first modern women's national tournament held in Illinois. There was never any talk about, you know, our goals are to get to a national championship because we didn't even know there was one. They could only afford eight of the players. There were 11, only eight of us could go. So can you imagine telling, we're going to go play in the national championship, but you three can't go? Seated 15th out of 16 teams, Immaculata met Westchester State in the title game, a team that had beaten them by 32 points two weeks earlier. The Mighty Max, hopeless underdogs, won the championship by four points. Only five fans made the trip to Illinois, but when the team was met by 500 at the airport, a new era in women's basketball had begun. When you're winning, you're, the, you're golden. And we were winning. The Mighty Max went on a 35-game winning streak, won the national championship again in 1973 and 74. We're playing in front of packed gyms. You can't get a ticket to get into the place on a Saturday afternoon. They inspired a daunting, sometimes disarming following among the sister servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. One of the things we found out that really could make noise were buckets, empty buckets and sticks. All of a sudden, everybody that had a bucket became the bucket brigade. The nuns had buckets, parents had buckets. It, it, was, it was crazy. That's got to be a really intimidating thing if you're a Catholic because you can appreciate all these nuns are praying against you and for us. What do you think that does to an opponent? I don't know, <laughs> but we won the game. The Mighty Max had become a dynasty women's basketball's answer to John Wooden and UCLA. They produced a series of women's firsts. The first game at Madison Square Garden. The first nationally televised game. 64, 53, if you can hear me, Immaculata. And the first game played outside the United States. It symbolized an era of women's sports in which we were breaking out of. We were moving out of the tunic era into a whole new era, and what was that gonna be? I think we were part of putting the stamp on what it was going to be, and it was gonna be about changing opportunities for women. In 1972, the same year Immaculata won its first championship, Title IX was enacted, guaranteeing women equal opportunities to men in the athletic arena. Bigger schools were now compelled to give women athletic scholarships, but Immaculata, which had no men, was not. Immaculata is the only college that I know of that was adversely affected by Title IX because Immaculata would not have survived a small, all-girls institution against Maryland, Tennessee. We couldn't compete with the facilities they had, and we wouldn't have continued. After three more national semifinal appearances, 
Coach Kathy Rush retired in 1977 with a record of 149 and 15. The Mighty Max would never again reach the Final Four and currently compete in Division Three. But they had sparked a movement that pushed women's athletics to a higher ground. I think Immaculata being an all-women's college um, provided an incubator for women to um, pursue any opportunity that they thought was possible. And we were encouraged to believe that anything was possible. To look at the circumstances, all to arrive at this place at that time, you have to think there's, there's some kind of divine intervention. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to rule out divine intervention for anything that turns out well.